in at least what the the media is reporting constantly and still to this day because she's now apparently ready to box semi-professionally. Um, the Octomom was that they made her out to be very media savvy. There was an element of that she was just capitalizing on this, that you know, from the beginning she her over-the-top behavior was just sort of this attempt to maximize her 15 minutes of fame and that you know she a lot of the um, discussion centered around you know how much atten her attempts, her, her organized attempts to grab attention. The Duggars, the 19 Kids and Counting uh, show that's on TLC, um, is sort of in the same vein. I mean, they are they seem to be in control of what's going on, whereas the, the with the young quintuplets and even Cheaper Brother Dozen, the, the story is the book and then the movie, and it's been remade uh, since then uh, a couple of times. Um, there. While there is that class element, the, the, one of the major differences is that the Suleiman, Nadia Suleiman was criticized heavily for being sort of at the controls of this great media machine. Whether or not it worked to the way she wanted it to is a, it's certainly a separate question that only she can answer, but it, it differs. I think that's a key way that it differs from the Dion's, where they were just sort of swept away in this sort of media uh, hype uh, environment. Uh, with the Duggars, the example I mentioned, the 19 Kids and Counting show, they are very, uh, compliant isn't a great word either, but they don't ruffle feathers. I mean, they go on the Today Show when they're told, when a new child comes along, and you know everything's hunky-dory, and um, their house gets bigger, and they have more children. But <laughs> Nadia Suleiman, I think you, you, you've hit on something. She certainly thumbed her nose, I guess, in a way, at... at, at media excess. I mean, that she she you know, tried to control it. I think the one thing I would say, though, is that, you know, the media, having somewhat limited experience in a couple of media places in my past, um, once, you know, a story is a story and once someone gains that kind of fame, it doesn't really matter what they do. Uh, how they're framed will change. And she, I, I think consistently from, you know, the beginning of her time, on our map, our cultural map, she's been sort of framed as kind of out of control and what's she doing? She already had six children. This is kind of ridiculous. How, are they, how is she going to feed them? Um, but, you know, they still, whenever she does something, you know, she could come out with a new line of peanut butter or, or you know, open a mall. They, they would go because there's that sort of residue of, uh, of, of the Octomom, you know. Uh, the Young Quintuplets, even though every so often they're, they're only, I think, a couple that are, are still alive that, that, that periodically pop up uh, in the newspaper, it wasn't, even though it was a complete circus when they were very little, it sort of dissipated, I guess, over time. Uh, but with, uh, it go, I think it does go back to also changes in how, in, in media demands. I mean, there's just right. so much time and so much right. space to be filled. So yeah, then it was the evening news. Right, exactly. Now it's 24 hours. Exactly. 24 and you, seven. Yeah. And you only had, uh, this is, you know, even growing up in the early 60s, you had three choices on television. Right. And so their authority to make, you know, the selections for what they put on those newscasts every night was a little bit more pronounced and had a little more gravitas than it does today. I mean, you just, today you have, I can't imagine being an assignment editor for CNN or uh, someone who tries to fill the New York Times website every day, coming up with a steady stream of, of, of material, because the idea being that if we don't have something, the public will look elsewhere. So that may be the primary difference. It's just there's there's just sort of this ongoing insatiable demand. Again, keeping the proviso about the linear media models out there uh, for for content, and so that just lends itself to the kind of stuff that we that I talk about in the book.